Hey, welcome back. So in unit two, activity one, uh, we found some strange results that don't fit with what we already knew. Um, but the naming that we gave to circuit B, when we set up circuit B and the lights briefly glowed, uh, we call that a charging circuit. And if we set up circuit A, after a charging circuit, then we would say that the capacitor is charged. Uh, then after we have charged the capacitor, if we set up circuit A without using this resetting wire, uh, then circuit A, where the bulbs briefly glowed, is what we would call a discharging circuit. And these results are strange and confusing, I think. And so our next mission in activity two let's look for some kind of evidence of what's going on in the wires to maybe give us some kind of clue uh, as to why did those charging and discharging circuits behave in the ways that they did, where the bulbs would glow briefly but then not stay lit. Um, so what I have here, and if you look at your activity too, uh, you can see you have the same thing uh, on your diagrams at the top. I've got a three cell battery here connected to a wire, connected to bulb, connected to wire, to one end of capacitor, from other end of capacitor, to the next bulb, and then back to the battery. Now we want to investigate. Uh, we're not going to worry about amount, but we are going to worry about the direction of flow in each of these wires for the charging circuit and for the discharging circuit. Uh, so what I did, I just taped some papers on here to label so I can remember which wire is which. So when I set up the charging circuit, then this is wire A, this is wire B, wire C, wire D. Now when I set up the discharging circuit, this should already be discharged, so circuit A from last time, the bulbs don't glow. Now, basically, wire E is just a very long version of wires A and D put together. Um, but then, sorry, when I set up the discharging circuit, the wire that used to be labeled B is now F on your page. The wire that used to be C is now labeled G on your page. So we are going to investigate the direction of flow of charges through these wires. And so just like last time, when I used the compass, I'm going to tape the compass down in place so that I'm not moving the compass itself. I'm just moving the circuit around the compass. So I'm just taping that down. And so now I'm going to investigate which way does the current flow, which way does the charge flow through wire A. So set that down. And also I just want us to be able to see, I don't want my hand in the way of the two bulbs. We can see the compass and I connect and the bulbs flash and go out just like we saw before. And I saw the compass needle turn, but not stay. The compass needle turned clockwise and then went back to the way it was. So briefly turned clockwise and then went back. So A went clockwise, but didn't stay there. So we're gonna rotate this circuit around. Uh, also, I need to discharge this capacitor before I test B. Now, I think the capacitor is discharged. And I'm going to rotate this whole thing around. So now I'm on wire B. And 
now when I complete the circuit, then we see once again the bulbs flashed on and the needle turned the same way as before. It turned clockwise and then went back to zero. And just in case my hand was blocking that, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to do that one again. I think we just saw an answer for wire F, but we'll come back to that. So setting this up again, so we can see briefly turned clockwise and then back to zero. I'm going to rotate more. So now we can see wire G. And I don't think I have reset this, so Ooh, a little spark there. So I think we're reset. And so now we are investigating wire C. And I clip. And I see the exact same result as before. My compass turned clockwise briefly and the lights flashed on. And then as the lights went off, the compass went back to zero. So we're going to get our last one for our charging circuit, wire D. I'm going to reset this real quick. And now when I connect wire D, I saw the same thing there, although I think I might've covered it up with my hand a little bit. So I'm gonna try this one again. And you know what, I'm gonna, so I don't block with my hand I'm going to use a different wire to complete this circuit. I disconnected over here. And so now I connect and the wire turned clockwise before going back to zero. So for my discharging circuit, each time I had the exact same result I had the compass turn clockwise. Interesting. So now that we have the charging circuits all done, now we need to do our three discharging wires. And since I'm here for wire E, I might as well do wire E while I'm at it. And so for the discharging circuit, I'm going to clip these two together so I'm not blocking your view. And now for the discharging circuit, we want to be able to see these bulbs. So wire E, discharging. Whoa. The bulbs glowed and the compass needle turned the other way. The compass needle turned counterclockwise and then went back to zero as the bulbs went out. So on wire E, the compass needle turned counterclockwise. So let's get these last two measurements. Need to set up the charging circuit first so I can discharge it. Now let's see here, I'm just going back around the other way. Wire A, we've already done because wire A and wire E are the same. We've got wire E. So wire F. Looking at wire F. Wire F. 
And now I've got this charged. And so to set up my discharging circuit, and again, it turned counterclockwise just briefly while the bulbs were glowing and went back to zero and the bulbs went out. So I'll set up my charging circuit. So now my capacitor is charged again and we're coming back to our last measurement for the experiment, which is wire G. And I clip, and once again, the needle turned counterclockwise when I discharged the circuit, when I discharged the capacitor. Uh, the bulbs flashed, the needle turned counterclockwise, and then went back to zero and the bulbs went dark. So recapping what we've seen here, um, each time we set up the charging or discharging circuit, the bulbs flash and all four wires, A, B, C, D, when I set up the charging circuit, then each time the needle of the compass turned clockwise. And when I set up the discharging circuit, then each time all three wires, E, F, G, the needle turned counterclockwise. And so we need to take a little bit of time to figure out what does this mean for us? So work on figuring out what you can best come up with, and then we'll take it from there. Thanks. Bye.